Yo, what's up gang? It's Cash, back again with another video, even though it's been a little bit. Today I'm going to be giving you guys a list of some helpful trans terminology for beginner and intermediate learners. Basically, I want you guys to not get stuck out there in the real world and not understand what someone's talking about when they're talking about like trans issues. Y'all ready? Let's get it. So first we're going to start off really basic. I'll just give you a quick rundown of what sex, gender identity, and what being transgender means. So first of all, sex is the things that make you biologically male or female, like your genitals, your chromosomes, etc. Next, your gender identity is how you feel about your gender. So if you were born a biological woman, do you feel like a woman or do you feel like a man, feel like something else? Or if you're a born biological man, do you feel like a man? Do you feel like a woman? Do you feel like something else? So basically being transgender is when you're born biologically one way, but you feel differently inside. I was personally born biologically female, but I don't feel like a woman. My brain is telling me one thing, but my body developed another way. So I'm transgender because my gender identity and my sex don't align. A lot of you might have heard the term transsexual before. I'm just going to quickly distinguish the difference between transgender and transsexual. Basically today, the correct word for anyone whose gender identity does not align with their sex is transgender. The term transsexual used to be used by clinicians talking uh, in a very medical sense about trans people. If you're on Twitter and you see transsexual, you know, written in someone's bio, that means that that person uses that word to describe themselves and you know that's obviously okay people are kind of like reclaiming the word or using it in a very medical term like they've medically transitioned so they refer to themselves as a transsexual i personally don't use that term for me but i do know of some people who do don't call someone a transsexual basically stick to trans that way you can you know chop off the second half of the word and just like be safer that way. Cisgender means basically just that you're not trans. So if you're born a biological male and you feel like a man, you're cisgender. 99.6% of the population is cisgender. Some of you might have heard of AFAB or AMAB or seen it written in an article or someone's bio. AFAB is assigned female at birth. Like that's me, someone who the doctor, you know, was like, this is a girl but I'm actually not a girl. So a lot of trans men will say like, oh, as an AFAB trans man, meaning like they were assigned female at birth, but they're not female. Same with AMAB, that means assigned male at birth. So a lot of trans women are AMAB and they are a woman. A kind of similar term with like some slight differences are trans masculine and trans feminine. So I'm trans masculine, but I don't identify as a trans man. I personally don't feel like a man or a woman, but I present more masculinely. So I use the term trans masculine to describe myself sometimes. Someone who's trans feminine might be a person who is AMAB and presents femininely or feels more feminine, but maybe not feel like a trans woman. Trans men and trans women still use trans masculine or trans feminine in addition to trans man and trans woman. They're not like mutually exclusive or anything like that. Next up, we have non-binary. I'm personally non-binary. Binary means two. So there are two options, male or female, but I don't feel like either. So I'm in the middle. I don't adhere to the binary. So therefore I'm non-binary. It means, you know, different things to different people, but that's kind of a basic definition. It's an umbrella term. Next, we have genderqueer. That can be a similar meaning to non-binary, depending on the person. It basically means they're also rejecting the binary genders. Oftentimes, genderqueer people feel very restricted by gendered labels, so they just say they're genderqueer, as opposed to non-binary, because some people think non-binary also puts you in a box, like there's male, non-binary, and female, and you're just making another box, but saying you're genderqueer is more expansive. You know, I don't really think of non-binary in that way, but some people do, and so they choose to use genderqueer. Something important to the trans discussion that a lot of cis people might not know is gender dysphoria. Now, in a general sense, dysphoria is the opposite of euphoria, so it means there's like an intense dislike or unhappiness. 
So if you apply that to your gender, oftentimes people find out that they're trans because they're experiencing gender dysphoria. On the other hand, we have gender euphoria, which can be like a really intense, happy feeling when you feel like your gender is aligned with how you look. So when I'm in public, if someone codes me as male or is confused by my gender, I feel gender euphoria because I'm doing a good job of showing them that I'm not a woman. Another term is misgendering. So misgendering basically means that you are not using the correct pronouns for someone. Hi, my name's Cash, I use they, them pronouns, and you're like, oh, okay, she's really cool. You're misgendering me. Try not to misgender people. If you do, apologize and move on. Don't make a big deal out of it. Even just such a small adjustment in the way you speak about someone can really change how they feel about themselves and how they feel about you. Try not to misgender people. So the term transition is also a big part of being trans. While not everyone transitions, a lot of people do. It is pretty self-explanatory. It's changing from your birth sex to the gender that you feel personally aligned with on the inside. That can take a lot of forms. First, there's HRT, which is hormone replacement therapy. Trans women or trans feminine people would take estrogen and trans men or trans masculine people would take testosterone, which is also called T. If you're someone who hasn't gone through puberty, like preteen or something like that, HRT would look like hormone blockers, basically something to prevent puberty of your biological sex from happening until you can make an informed decision on whether or not you want to go on hormones. There's, you know, no side effects or anything. It basically just delays the irreversible damage that can happen from puberty. So in addition to hormones, some people transition by changing their physical appearance. When I first started to socially transition, I would wear a binder and it's like a tank top. It's really tight and basically pushes your titties down. It's intensely uncomfortable. And if you have like a bigger chest, a lot of sweat is built up under there. It's just like a terrible experience, basically. A lot of people think that, you know, trans men bind with ace bandages, things like that. That's actually really terrible for you and can end up in broken ribs or bruised ribs, things like that. So um, an actual like binder is way more recommended or a really tight sports bra. You're also not supposed to bind for more than like eight hours of time. You're supposed to take breaks and not bind at night or when you're exercising because it can cause really bad damage and it's really uncomfortable. Like I cannot stress how uncomfortable it is, especially if you have a big chest. So something that trans women do or trans femmes do is tucking, another uncomfortable thing. Basically, when you're wearing pants or a skirt, if you're a woman, you don't wanna have a bulge in your pants, right? Both like the visual cues for someone looking at you and for yourself, you don't wanna feel like you have a penis, basically, if you feel like you shouldn't have one. There are a couple different ways to tuck. Some people wear really tight underwear and kind of stick their, their penis back towards their butthole and it can kind of sit like that in the underwear during the day. Some people use tape to tape their penis back towards their butthole. It's recommended to take like a cold shower before because your testicles will kind of start to like shrink back up into the glands that they originally dropped from. So you can kind of like push them back up there and then tuck your penis like back. And it's recommended to put medical tape around it before you do it and to shave so that when you tape it, you're not ripping hair and skin. It's like quite the process. It's very uncomfortable. If you have to pee while you're out, like it's just a nightmare. But that's something that trans women go through that you probably don't think about. Another medical part of transitioning can be surgery if you want it or can, you know, afford it or physically are able to have it. Usually people have top surgery before anything else. For trans men or trans masculine people, that means a double mastectomy. There are several types. The most common is double incision. If you have anything like above an A cup, basically it's called double incision because the doctor, here I'll show you my titties. The doctor basically makes two incisions along here and then removes the breast tissue um, and the nipples and then flattens your chest, sews it back up, puts the nipple graft back on, but makes it smaller. They use this little, it's like a cookie cutter and they basically cut your nipple to make it look like a masculine nipple and then they sew it back on and it looks like that after. There's something else called keyhole surgery for people with flat chests. Basically what happens is they cut around the nipple and then they can take tissue out just from there. 
So that's a lot less invasive. For trans feminine people, there's something called the breast augmentation, which a lot of cisgender women get, just, you know, a boob job, but it is a little bit different. Once trans women start taking hormones, they form, generally speaking, they form kind of like A cup titties, and then the doctor like works with that, and then like will put an implant in. Often women, when they have boob jaws, unless they have really small chest, they have some extra like sagging skin to work with, whereas like a trans woman might not. So it's like pretty painful, more so than like your average boob job would be. So I would say those are like the main forms of transitioning. I'll get to bottom surgeries in the next video, but I would say if, if someone is going to medically transition, I would say hormones and top surgery are probably the two most common because not everyone gets bottom surgery. One more term is a dead name. Basically, a dead name is someone's birth name. When you come out as trans, usually if you don't have a super gender neutral name, you'll pick a different name. I go by Cash, but that was not the name that my parents gave me. It's called dead name because basically like you're not that person. That person was never who you are. Your chosen name is who you are. And so like that person's dead and you're never supposed to ask a trans person their dead name. It's just considered disrespectful and there's like literally no reason why you need to know. I personally just call my birth name my birth name. I don't have like an intense hatred or anything towards my birth name so I don't think of that person being dead which a lot of people do because they had really terrible lives or childhoods and you know want to make the distinction. If you're talking with someone you know who's trans you could say oh what do you refer to your birth name as and they're like oh yeah that's my dead name that's my government name, that's my birth name, you know, everyone has a preference, but make sure that you talk to your trans friends and make sure you know what they're okay with. Okay, the last term for this video is going to be passing. Let's say I'm a trans man and I go out in public and people call me sir, nobody thinks I'm a woman, I'm passing as a man. If I was a trans woman, if I went out in public and everyone thought I was a woman, then I would be passing as a woman. So passing isn't everyone's goal, just to be clear. That's not the end all be all of being trans. A lot of people like not passing, but I would say like a lot of trans people, their goal is to pass because if they feel inside that they're a man, they're gonna want everyone else to think that they're a man and same with trans women. Especially trans women, it's important for their safety to pass. So a lot of people will take steps to ensure that they aren't putting themselves in like dangerous situations where people think that she's a trans woman. It's way safer to pass as a woman, if that makes sense. All right, y'all, that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Follow me on Instagram, like this video, comment, subscribe. It really makes a big difference and I appreciate it so much. I'll be back next week with some more advanced trans terms to fill you guys in. Thanks for watching. Peace.